Hi, this is Mike from BookUp.com, and this video is on back solving with Chess Openings Wizard Professional. I'm going to make three assumptions in this video. First, that you are at least a master. Second, that you are using a game database, most likely chess-based. So when I say chess-based, it works with all systems that can make PGN files, but I'll concentrate on chess-based when I mention game databases. The third thing I'm assuming is you just picked up your copy of Chess Openings Wizard Professional. Thank you. You spent $200, and you're trying to figure out what you're going to get for it. Well, the most important feature, I think, inside of Chess Openings Wizard Professional is back solving. So I've set up a fictitious uh, repertoire. So this is not my repertoire. I play d4. But let's assume this is your repertoire and my repertoire. And so after e4, the only move we're planning on playing is white. We have to be ready for the Sicilian, uh, ready for the French, ready for what else does this guy play? Well, he's ready for double king pawn, ready for Karakhan, ready for knight f6, ready for Alicans, anything. Uh, center counter. So, but we're going to go play the Sicilian for this example. You'll notice too that uh, everything is back solved already as equal. So after Sicilian, after uh, black play c5, I've got lines in here that show that no matter what happens with best play for both sides, I can at least get to an equal position or maintain equality. You might want better than that, but I'm happy with equality. So knight f3, let's click here, d6, let's go right down the main line. Knight f6, knight c3, here we go. And bishop g5. So after bishop g5, I'm ready for anything. Well, what I reasonably expect in this repertoire is I expect either e6 or h6. Each of the candidate moves has a back-solved informant rate symbol next to it. Um, only after it's been back solved. So for instance, there is no editing this. We do not actually right click and change this. This is automatically being computed by the back solving process. So what this is saying is that given all the lines that are beyond E6 with best play for both sides, white can expect to achieve at best an equal position. With H6, unclear. Now I'm happy with unclear in the Sicilian. Half the time, <laughs> positions are unclear in the Sicilian. What back solving does for me, it answers the question of how does a theoretical novelty or some new game, which could have a TN in it, affect my repertoire? Maybe they publish something in a magazine. In this case, I'm going to use an example from Roman Zinziashvili's DVD on the Sicilian. Now, Roman in his DVD suggests playing the move that he's never seen played before, which is G6. Now, he talks about the fact that this really looks bad, and it's anti-positional, and obviously, the, the I say obviously, but uh, the, the, the move that just gets invited right away is bishop takes f6 to just try to punish this. But say, for instance, if, you, if I decided to play just uh, queen e2 because I didn't quite understand this, what Roman is saying is after bishop g7, black gets a very comfortable game, possibly even has a slight advantage. Uh, in fact, uh, he basically calls it a, a more comfortable version of the dragon, and I don't need that as white. So let's back up here and see what's going on. Back up and see what happens if we try bishop f6 instead. And his DVD Roman says this move is practically forced. And of course, black is going to recapture the bishop. So let's take a look at uh, a couple different lines that uh, Zinzi uses to, to back up his idea. So bishop c4 gets played a lot. Uh, bishop g7 seems to be the obvious thing. And after bishop g7, uh, white castled, black castles, and then knight db5, trying to pick up that pawn on d6. So what often happens here is that black plays f5, and ef5 is kind of the way to go here. Bishop's going to take back on f5. And now, if he tries to win the pawn on d6, you get to play bishop takes c2. And if uh, white goes ahead and recaptures on c2, black's going to pick up the knight on d6. And then he's going to be able to play knight d4 with a pretty good position. That's no good. So let's mark that as a good position for black or slightly good for black. So just to give this line a little more credence, let's go back and uh, take a look at what happens if he tries to play bishop b3 instead, guarding that pawn. So after uh, bishop takes f5, and instead of uh, taking the knight or taking the pawn on d6 right away, you play bishop b3. This point you can play bishop e5, guarding the pawn. 
this point, the next logical try is probably a four. Play a four there. And at this point, just trade off. So bishop takes c3, knight comes back, takes c3. Otherwise, your pawns are going to be mangled in an open c file. Here, Roman gives an example from one of his games. Uh, he plays rook e8 and uh, king h1 to get out of the way of the check. Knight h5, going to try to dismantle the bishop. Bishop d5, probably is the best place to park the bishop for the moment. And then queen b6. And at this point, white has to choose between what he actually did in the game, which is pull the bishop back to b3, and then, of course, black just traded off, or to play the rook to b1, which is spending a rook to guard a pawn. So the dynamics in this position and the weakness, the, the trait equal weakness, as he thinks in this case, of the weakness of the pawn on f4 and the weakness of the pawn on d6 still gives black a very slight advantage. Let's mark that one as a very slight advantage for black. Obviously, there are all kinds of other ways that white could try to play this and has tried to play this, but uh, Roman spends the better part of a DVD explaining how all these positions look promising for white, but when you play them down to some point, uh, black actually gets more than compensation for what's going on. So this is our example from real life. Actually, what we'll do right now is uh, go run a command it's called backsolve. And it brings it up and says, okay, we're going to solve numeric assessments. We're not going to work with those. Those are uh, assessments made by a computer and numbers, numeric assessments. Inform informant, rate sim the informant rate symbols are the ones we're interested in. And we can also solve accumulations of variations. But right now, we're only interested in just the informant rates. And we'll start, uh, start solving from the starting position of chess. And this little batch process will run for a few seconds. And there we go. See how it does. Okay, it solved uh, 53 total positions in the book. We're good. So let's go back to the starting position of chess and see what happens. Whoa, look what happened. E4 is no longer with best play for white and black, reaching a position which is maintaining equality for white. Uh, let's uh, click forward a few moves and see what's going on. Well, uh, obviously our, our lines against E6 and, and so on are still intact, but our lines against the Sicilian are now showing a slight advantage for black. How can this be? Now here's the thing. Um, this doesn't mean that the Sicilian has been overturned, but it means that it, given everything in this ebook, there is at least one critical line that does overturn it. So it does actually leave with best play for black and white to a position which is a slight advantage for black. Let's keep going here and see where it, what, uh, where it made that, that decision. Knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, at this point, uh, let's see, okay, knight c6, come on, quick time, we can go a little bit faster. Okay, bishop g5, and here we have the candidates I originally had in my repertoire. I'm prepared for e6 and the occasional crazy h6, but now, down here, black has the opportunity to play g6, and given all the analysis from that DVD, which I can't find a way to refute, and neither can Roman, I'm sure somebody's done it by now, but at the point that that DVD came out, Hey, this was the theoretical novelty, and g6 was really playable, and actually leads to dynamic positions that give a slight advantage to black in every variation. So, as you can see, back solving is telling us that it's basically it's telling us that e4 in our repertoire has been overturned. e4 with best play, and we have to assume best play from our opponents, right, is going to give a slight advantage to black. So this is the place where we have to improve. So. This is what's going on. Um, the, the, the system, the back-solving system, has gone down through every line of play, and it's gotten to the, the final position, which it sees is a slight advantage for black after queen takes d2, or a slight advantage after a bishop takes f6. And again, there's a chock full of uh, variations DVD available from Roman if you want to go through all of them. But because this can't be overturned, we have to take a look at the hole in our repertoire, which is now all the way back to e4. Now we could just decide to fix it by playing d4. <laughs> we could decide to fix it by playing something other than bishop g5. But at this point, until we overturn something in this tree, then it, then bishop g5 is is a bust currently. It's going to give black an advantage if, if black plays these lines. So you're probably not entering analysis from a book necessarily, or you could. Uh, you're probably not entering analysis from, you know, your personal chess teacher, although you could. You could also enter it from Roman's DVD. What you're most likely doing is going out into chess base and finding all the uh, recent games 
that match your repertoire, that at least match the ECO code of the repertoire lines that you play, and you're importing them into Chess Openings Wizard. Then you're hitting back solve, and it takes a few minutes depending on how many games you've imported. And then you see that your line, maybe E4, is a win for white or a win for black, and you go, well, that can't be. Well, it is based on all the information in the database. What, uh, what Chess Openings Wizard does in the case of importing uh, PGN games is it back solves from the final position of each of those games. Now you have to f counter in that some of those games could have had blunders in them, some of them will, and some of the games will have been lost on time pressure. So say for instance the final position is a win for white but black won on time. So you'll have to go and weed those out, but it's really cool that you can do that because otherwise those things would throw the game statistics you know, wonker because it looks like a win for white but it's actually a better position for black. That's what back solving does. So your job already is to go out and sift through those games. I mean, you're going to get the games through Weekend Chess or, or some other service, and you're bringing them in, and you're filtering them with Chess Base. Then you bring them into Chess Openings Wizard, and you press back solve. Then your job is to go and find the, the critical line. Back solving at least is going to point out what the critical line is automatically, and it basically does that research for you. And like I like to tell everybody who buys Chess Openings Wizard Professional is don't be afraid to push that button. And when I say push that button, I mean commands, back solve, and then press the back solve button. It does obviously make sweeping changes to your ebook repertoire, but it's supposed to. It really is working for you. And it, it does it independently from the, uh, the informant symbols that you would set yourself. So say, for instance, I decide this position is actually equal or unclear. I can set what is known as the static value of this position to unclear, but it'll still back solve from the best lines of play from the final positions in, in the tree, which is really what you wanted to do. So I can go back, for instance, at the starting position of chess, I can decide that this position really is equal, or maybe even a slight advantage for white, if that's what I think. Or maybe I think e4 is a win for white, or I think you know, white <laughs> the, the game is actually won for white, or whatever. I can change that, but that will not change the back solved value of this position based again on everything out there. So let's go back and see what happens if we refute it. Let's go out to that line, maybe E4, click out there again, and see it fix itself. Say we find some improvement. So at this point, uh, maybe it doesn't play E6. Maybe we've decided that uh, G6 is not such a good move. We back up to G6 there, and so we go and delete that. Just delete that candidate completely. So now it just all, all it has to work with now is e6 and h6, and so now we'll back solve to equality. So let's go back to commands again, back solve, press OK, give it a few seconds to chew through all those positions, and now we go back to the starting position of chess, and everything's back to hunky dory, e4 back to equals. So now you can see what back solving is doing for you. Whenever you introduce new information, new lines, and new assessments of the final positions, and again, most commonly that's done by taking a PGN file extracted from chess base or from the weekend chess or wherever you get it with the lines that you're interested in, back solve it, and then it figures out what the critical line is automatically. If you have more questions on Backsolve, there are some links in the help files online at bookup.com. And you can also email me at mike at bookupmembers.com and ask whatever questions you have because, well, you've got the Chess Openings Wizard Professional version, and I definitely want to help you use it. Yeah.